In this series of videos, we've been talking about relevant costs for short-term decision making. In this video, we're going to discuss a specific type of decision called a special order. And the question we're going to work through to explain it is question number four of the worksheet. And if you haven't seen any of the videos so far, you don't know or you might not know the worksheet is linked below. So just in the uh, description of the video, there's a Dropbox link. You can click it, download it, and you can have a copy of the worksheet for yourself. Um, okay, so let's read through the question. and. Before actually, before I read through the question, I should talk about what a special order decision is. It's kind of like the name sounds. A customer comes in and they don't want the normal deal. They want a special deal. And you might say, okay, if somebody comes in and they bought it by one unit of whatever it is I sell, I'm never going to give them a special deal. It's like too bad. But if a customer comes in and says they want a thousand or you know, hundreds of times what a normal order is. I might give them a special deal for that because it, it might be worth it. So uh, that's the scenario we're looking at here. So Kate's company is this company and they're going to have a customer come in that wants 5,000 units, which is a, a very big order for the company. Uh, and they're going to have to debate whether or not it's worthwhile to uh, give these guys a deal and, and how deep a deal they can cut. So let's take a look at number four and let's work our way through. Kate's company manufactures and sells a single product called a Ting. Operating at capacity, the company can produce and sell 45,000 Tings per year. Costs associated with this level of production and sales are as follows. And you can see the costs there, direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead. Those three are almost always going to be relevant to a decision. In other words, if I make some more tings, I guess that's where this question is going, I'm going to need the materials, labor, and variable costs associated with making them. Fixed costs are often not relevant, unless it tells us a little something about it. I almost assume fixed costs are not relevant. If I'm already making a bunch of stuff, and then I'm thinking, okay, incrementally, i got to make a few more units, well, the fixed costs have already been incurred. They're, they're not going to be different between the alternatives if I make the units or if I don't. So fixed costs are usually not relevant. Uh, to my decision. Variable selling, okay, that's likely relevant. Fixed selling, likely not. Uh, but it, that question might tell me something that, that indicates they're relevant. We'll see. The Tings normally sell for $75 each. So they sell for $75. You can see our full cost there is $69. Not much of a markup on this thing. Uh, fixed overhead is constant at $630,000 per year within the range of 35 to 45,000 things per year. So I'm assuming my fixed overhead, here it is, 630. That's going to be fixed uh, as long as I don't go over 45,000 things or under 35. But we'll see what the question says. Uh, next year, Kate's company expects to sell for only 40,000 things. Okay, so we're right in the middle of that range. A large retail chain is offered to purchase 5,000 things if Kate's is willing to accept a 20% discount from the regular price. Okay, so we're going to sell 45. We're still within the range where the 630 is constant. I'm going to assume that those fixed costs, that 630 fixed cost anyway, not relevant. Um, I kind of glossed over something though. A large retail chain is offered to purchase 5,000 things, so a very big order. But they don't want to pay normal price, right? They want a 20%. Ooh, I just wrote over it. Let me erase that. I was trying to underline it. Uh, they want a 20% discount. So what does a 20% discount look like? Well, we normally sell the, the things for $75. 20% off represents 20% of 75 is $15 discount. So they want to buy it from us for 60 bucks. That was supposed to be a dollar sign. Let me just fix that as well. So they want $15 off and they'd like a price of 60 bucks. Um, okay, let's read on. Uh, there were no there would be no sales commissions on this order. Uh, because of course salespeople normally sell our stuff, and that's that's a large portion of our variable selling expense. And thus, variable selling expenses would be slashed by 75%. So because there's no salespeople involved, this is just a deal happening more at the president or sales manager level, uh, our variable selling expenses go way down. Reading on. However, Kate's company would have to purchase a special machine to engrave the retail chain's name on the 5,000 units. This machine would cost $40,000. Okay, so... We want to accept this order. Yes, we don't have a lot of our normal costs, but we do have 
a big cost in that we have to acquire this machine to do it. The company has no assurance that the retail store would purchase any additional units at any time in the future. Determine the impact of profit on profits next year if the special order is accepted. And there's a big assumption here, and I don't think it's stated clearly enough. We're assuming that if we supply the retail store, they're not taking away from our normal sales, right? They're not eating our sales. And that's a big if, right? If we accept the special order, we assume it doesn't affect our own sales. And if it does, then we have to consider that. But we're not considering that in this problem. So if I were doing a make or buy decision, I would prepare sort of one side make, and I'd say, here's the cost to make, and one side buy, here's the cost to buy, and I compare them. Well, here, we're kind of, we don't have to do two things to compare them because if it's a special order, if you think of the alternatives, alternative one is yes, accept the special order. And so I'm going to prepare an income statement, so what it looks like to accept the order. But my alternative is no. Well, a no is just a bunch of zeros, right? If I don't accept the order, then I have no revenue or costs associated with having accepted the order. So I'm just going to prepare an income statement, see what it looks like to accept this order. So if I accept the order, the top thing is there's a bunch of sales revenue. And on a per unit basis, we said it, we were going to get $60 per unit. And just to remind you, that's that $75, that's our regular price, but they get a 20% discount. So they get $15 off, $15 off 75 means they're getting, <coughs> excuse me, $60 as their price. Uh, so that's their price per unit, but of course they're selling not one unit, but 5,000 units. So for 5,000 units, that means our revenue is uh, $300,000 or $30,000. My math is terrible. $300,000. So a pretty big customer, right? A $300,000 order comes in, and that's, that's significant, certainly for a company of this size. Now let's look at our costs. We got material labor, variable overhead, all of those are relevant. Again, material, because if I don't accept the order, I don't have to have the material related to the order. Same with labor and same with the variable overhead. So DM, DL, and variable overhead, these are all gonna be relevant to my decision. 22, 12, and four. So again, 22 times 5,000 units is $110,000. 12 times 5,000 units is $60,000. 4 times 5,000 units is $20,000 in total. Uh, moving down the list in terms of relevant costs here. Those are all the manufacturing costs. Fixed overhead, we said, well, it's going to be 630 a year between 35 and 45,000 things. This isn't pushing us out of that. So we're still stuck at 630. So if we accept the order or if we don't accept the order, we're still paying 630 in fixed cost. This means it's not different between the alternatives. It's not differential. Therefore, it's not relevant. I'm not going to use it. Variable selling expense, normally eight bucks a unit, but in this case, they said, no, it's 75% off. So if it's $8 a unit, 75% of $8 is $6, and it's, it goes down by $6. So uh, it's going to go to $2, right? 75% off of eight is two. So that's my variable selling expense that I actually incur on this. And two times 5,000 is 10,000. Now the final cost associated with this, well, actually the final cost on my list here is fixed selling expense. And it didn't really tell me anything about the selling expense, the fixed selling expense. Because there's no mention of it, I'm going to assume that fixed means fixed. And that means if I take the order, I pay 405. If I don't take the order, I pay 405. Just like fixed MOH, because it's not different between the alternatives, it's not relevant. That's an assumption here, but the question hasn't told me otherwise, and I think that's a good assumption here. So that's all of my costs, except for this silly machine. I've got a $40,000 machine. Now, it's not $40,000 per unit. It's $40,000 for everything, right? And that's this special machine to do that engraving.
Um, so it's forty thousand dollars in total. Some textbooks don't like you to do this per unit. I don't really care. I, I think it makes sense to do it per unit. If we're only doing 5,000 units, it's $8 per unit. But again, some texts and notes will say, oh, no, that's, that's more of a total cost. You shouldn't do it on a per unit basis, but I think it's fine, too. So let's figure out our total costs here. Twenty-two plus twelve, that's thirty-four, thirty-four, thirty-eight, forty, forty-eight. And uh, 110, 170, 190, 200, 240. So my revenue, 60, minus my cost, 48, gives me 12. 300 minus 240 gives me 60. And that is my advantage of accepting the deal. That's the difference. The, the difference, sorry, uh, if I accept. So if I accept this deal, my company is $60,000 better off. If I don't accept the deal, I leave $60,000 off the table. So in fact, I, I could probably have uh, accepted the deal even if the price was lower. Uh, a common follow-up is what's the lowest possible price we would be willing to accept? Well, the will lowest possible price is anything that makes us money. So our costs, our relevant costs are 48 bucks. So anything over 48 bucks, we should accept this deal. Now, again, I, I do think if we start to get too low, then obviously um, it could start to affect our own sales, uh, and that's a, that's a potential problem. But by the letter of the sort of accounting textbook law, if this is a positive decision, it's putting money in our pocket, even if we charge 49 bucks, right? It costs us 48, we make a dollar a unit, we make $5,000 on the deal. Well, $5,000 in your pocket is better than $5,000 not. So by the accounting textbook, we say yes to the deal. Now, I think in reality, you probably wouldn't say yes unless you got a healthier markup than a dollar. But I just want you to know when you're answering these questions, you, you kind of should note that. Look, if we're making money on it, it, we should probably go ahead with the deal. So in this case, we're making $60,000 on this sale. Uh, we should do it. You know, it's, it's $60,000 to our benefit to take this deal. All right, we've got one more video planned for this. It's a constrained resource decision and it's in the next video. That's it for this one.